the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you one and all. Welcome to the second Sunday of Advent worship service for Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA located in Atlanta, Georgia. We're delighted that you've decided to spend some time with us during this Advent season. Come with us now as we go forth in intentional worship of our triune God. The season of Advent continues. God comes among us in many ways. We remember God's coming in Emmanuel. Jesus became the Son of Man to show us what God intended us to be. May his life be our light. Let us pray. Gracious God, you judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains yield prosperity for all your people and the hills are clothed with your splendor. You defend the cause of the poor and deliver the needy. You are like the rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth, filled with the joy and peace of believing. We will sing you our praises and serve you with our whole being to the end that the nations may affirm your glory. Amen.
our call to confession. Beloved, in this confessional moment, let us lay before God and one another the distance between us, the impatience, idolatries, and lack of compassion that form our confessions for this day. For, beloved, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Yet in mercy, we know that our God will forgive us and renew us if only we would confess. In that posture now, let us pray together our prayer of confession. Gracious and welcoming God, have mercy on your people. We confess that we do not believe in your incarnation. We do not heed your word each day and all that we say and do. We do not see our neighbors, families, and friends as beloved children whom you have made. In your mercy, forgive us, for we repent of our ways and look to your power to heal us and raise us up so that at last, at the last, you will gather us to you and give us peace. Amen. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news, and it is good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, that we might be dead to sin and be alive to all that is good. So I declare to you, in the name of the risen one, that you are, I am, we are forgiven. Now go and do likewise and be at peace. We turn now to the proclamation of the word portion of our worship service for this Lord's Day. After our prayer of illumination, our scriptures for today will be as follows. The Old Testament text comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. And our New Testament lesson comes from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Pray with me, please. Your word, holy God, was written for our instruction. By your Holy Spirit, open our ears and fill us with the mysteries of your ancient love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. Listen for the word of the Lord. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. 
The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, and the lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young, their young, shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, the nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the atlas den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Thus ends our first reading. Our New Testament reading will come from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Listen for the word of the Lord. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that of these stones that God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the shaft with the unquenchable fire. This is the word of God for the people of God.
On this second Sunday of Advent, this Sunday when we as a church family celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion, I bid you peace, joy, and love. The sermon for this Sunday finds its basis in the lectionary texts which have already been read and in these words found in Paul's letter to the church at Rome, chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Listen for the word of the Lord. The apostle writes, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of Scripture we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another. Therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God, for I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will confess you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name and say, and again, he says, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This morning, I'd like to speak Briefly from the subject, spirit filled. Spirit filled. Pray with me, please. God of our salvation, you strengthen the winding ways of our hearts and smooth the paths made rough by sin. We pray now your presence as we continue in worship of you. We pray that as your presence is made known to us, that you will keep our conduct blameless, keep our hearts watchful in holiness, and bring to perfection the good you have brought in us. Lord God, as we enter this preaching moment, we ask that you draw us near. Let your spirit descend upon us, embrace us, and envelop us, filling us with grace, love, joy, and peace. Now, God, for as much as without thee we're not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things that follow direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Spirit filled. Beloved, Advent is the season of hope, faith, peace, joy, and love. Tis the season to tap into all the beauty of life that fills us up and strengthens us and gives us the courage and the stamina to keep on keeping on. Now, as we set a time, our time aside in Advent, as we set our time aside in Advent for preparation and intentional prayer and penitence, We give ourselves over to the presence, power, and prodding of the Holy Spirit, this third person of the Trinity who mysteriously transforms us, grows us up, and perfects us for the moment while guiding us into the light of what is to come. On today, when we look at our scriptures, there's a theme that runs through them all, And I hope you've noticed it, but if you haven't, let me point it out to you. 
All three of our scriptures say something about the Holy Spirit, the promised arrival of the Holy Spirit, and the workings of the Holy Spirit in our lives. In the Isaiah passage, we have the Spirit resting on Jesse's chute, suggesting that through the working of the Holy Spirit and eventually through Jesus Christ, the whole earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Let's look again at that passage. It says, A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Do you see it? Do you see the Holy Spirit at work in that passage? Now let's look at the Matthew passage. In it we are told of the incarnate Christ and what makes his baptism different from John's baptism. The scripture says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Beloved, you notice it? You see the difference in the baptisms? John baptizes with water for the repentance of sin. With John, you are cleaned. But with Jesus, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. See that? When the, when the Messiah baptizes, you are converted. You are changed. I hope you see the Trinitarian logic of hope and faith in these words. The Holy Spirit draws Christ and his people and his creation to the Father, the Creator, the Sovereign One. And finally now, now, let's look at the Romans passage. In it, the Apostle Paul tells us of how the Holy Spirit inspires the diverse membership of Christ's church to come together and sing joyful praises to God's name. Yes, beloved, in each of these passages, we learn something about the mysterious power of the Holy Spirit. And as we learn, it becomes clear to us that the Holy Spirit is busy. Busy making things happen. Busy bringing folks out of the past, through the present, and into the future. Busy giving you and me a glimpse on this side of the Jordan a glimpse of what God has in store for us in the kingdom to come. Now, now I especially like the Romans text in this Advent season, for it tells us so much about how God is actively working in our lives. Yes, when we read these words, we recognize that sometime what the eye fails to notice, and the pragmatic part of our brain fails to interpret. The ear and the creative spirit in us hears and interprets. For here in this passage, we learn something about the Holy Spirit and the power inherent in praise, the power inherent in joyful singing. Praise and joyful singing that the gift of the Holy Spirit gives, which transports us to that place where we commune with God and suspend ourselves in the time to come. Beloved, have you ever in your worship, 
Have you ever in your worship, both your individual and corporate worship, have you ever given yourself over, opened yourself up to the presence and the power of God's Holy Spirit? Have you ever in your worship, in your praise, freed yourself and allowed God's Spirit to descend upon you? enfold you and embrace you? Have you allowed God's Spirit to fill you with love? Now, now, if you have, you know that it is a marvelous thing, a marvelous and mysterious thing for which John Reber wrote these words. Weber wrote, Oh, let the Son of God enfold you with his spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you. And his spirit, like a dove, will descend upon your life and make you whole. That's beautiful. Beloved, allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life, to make a powerful difference that fills you, satisfies you, heals you, and makes you love, that's being spirit-filled. Are you spirit-filled? Our scriptures for today remind us of the powerful presence of the Holy Spirit in our individual and communal lives. The Holy Spirit that grants wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit which cleanses, converts, changes and challenges. The Holy Spirit that creates harmony and wholeness so that the body can glorify God with one voice. The Holy Spirit who guides us into the places where we have not yet been. The Holy Spirit that guides us into becoming the people, the church we have not yet become. And the Holy Spirit who, at the table, at the feast which Christ has prepared for us, the Holy Spirit who lifts us into the presence of Christ as we partake of the bread and the wine as we are renewed, restored, and are sealed with our covenant, with our triune God, is once again in place. Spirit-filled. Advent is a time of preparation, penitence, and prayer. Advent is is a time when we should take the time to reflect. It's a time when we should give a long look at what God has done for us. It's a time when we should reflect on how God has brought us through storms and through wildernesses. It's a time when we should look at the joy, the happiness, and the peace that God has placed in our lives. It's a time when we should consider God's commitment to us, to making us ready for the kingdom to come. And it is a time when we should give ourselves over to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, it is a spirit-filled time when the Spirit's mystery and magnificence should move us, should motivate us to love and to live peaceably with one another, to have hope and to rejoice. Our good news on this second Sunday in Advent is the God we serve is always with us in the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
always with us, walking with us daily, filling us with all the beauty of this season. Hope, faith, peace, joy, and love filling us. If only we would open ourselves up to his power, his presence, and his prodding. Spirit filled. I close with these questions. And my questions are, are you open to the power and presence of God's Spirit in your life? Do you desire to be filled and satisfied with God's love? Are you Spirit filled? If so, is your tank full or are you running just a little bit low? Spirit filled. Think on these things as we go to the table and in the days and weeks to come. Pray with me. Almighty God, who came to us long ago in the birth of Jesus Christ, be born in us anew today by the power of your Holy Spirit. Today we offer our lives as home to you and ask for your grace and strength to live as your faithful, joyful children. It is in the name of the risen one that we offer this prayer. In the name of the Creator, the Savior, and the Sustainer. Amen.
friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from north and south and east and west and sit at table in the kingdom of God. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared. This is an open table. All that is required for take of this feast is that you eat. Pray with me, please. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. That the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, fill us out to be the body of Christ in the world. In union with your church in heaven and on earth, we pray, O oh God, that you will fulfill your purpose in us and in all the world. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, when we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal land. In Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to him, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do so in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a covenant, new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. My brothers and sisters in Christ, every time you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. The body of Christ given for each of us. Let us eat. Blood of Christ shed for each of us. Let us be Pray with me, please. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for this service. Help us who have shared Christ's body and received his cup. Help us to be his faithful disciples so that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom and our love be your love, reaching out into the light of the world. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We turn now to the service of giving for this second Sunday of Advent. Beloved, again, we are very grateful for the generosity that you have shown to this ministry. As children of the Most High God, we bear fruit worthy of our repentance when we give of our tithes and our offerings for the well-being 
of all of God's creation. Please be generous and give for all of God's creation. Great is our God who is worthy of ultimate thanksgiving every step of the day. In that spirit, let us pray. Magnificent, holy, wonderful, we just love you. We come to you always thankful. We thank you for everything, the blood in our body that courses through our veins, the air that we breathe in our lungs, the ground that we walk on, we love you. We thank you. We ask that always that you keep us mindful and focused on the path forward. We ask during this holiday season that you continue to keep us grateful for all of the little things, right? The ability to talk with one another, to express thanks to one another, to express, to give counsel to one another, to give a hug to one another, to share a joke with, to laugh with, to exercise with, to compete with, to engage in commerce with. Lord, we ask you to keep us grateful for all of these things. We ask that you uh, bless us even in the times where we continue to bless us, even in the times where we don't feel worthy to be blessed. We ask that even though some of us are going through some of the worst things imaginable, we ask that you keep us in constant communion with you. Keep us, keep our heads high so that when we come on out to the other side, we can look back through the situation and know that you are real. And as this holiday season continues to, to, to open up and fresh feelings emerge, nostalgic feelings emerge, we ask that you continue to give us the reason, give us, sorry, give us the purpose behind what it is that we're doing. And that purpose is to always serve and edify you. And it's in the mighty, holy, wonderful essence of risen Christ that we offer this prayer. Amen. A parting word. We'd like to thank our worship leaders for this Lord's Day. Serving as our liturgist, Elder Zettler Clay IV, our virtual musicians, Mrs. Sheila Wheat Harris, Ms. Esther Renee Clark, and Deacon Leela Bolden. And as always, we'd like to thank our video producer, Elder Anthony Meadows. Beloved, take this charge. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may be with one voice and in that one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Beloved, until we gather again in this virtual space, I am the Reverend Dr. Cecilia A. Taylor, pastor of Church of the Master Presbyterian Church, USA, located in Atlanta, Georgia. We do hope to see you soon.